Hey guys, I need a photo of AI Master. Do you know who is AI Master? Make Death Star great again. Okay, uh. Today, I'm pulling back the curtain on Google's new VO3, the next gen AI video model that's got me acting like a kid in a tech toy store. We're talking text to video. You type a description and VO3 spits out an eight second video clip with sound. Yes, audio and video from just your words. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to harness VO3 to create funny viral style videos like this. It's just a few toasters, right? What's the worst that could happen? The big deal here is native audio. Unlike earlier models, VO3 doesn't just create silent clips. It also produces sound effects, background noise, even character dialogue to match. Each clip is limited to about eight seconds for now. So we're talking short form content. They left behind a a ball today. It bounced higher than I can jump. What manner of magic is that? Now, Google gives us two main ways to use VO3, Flow and Gemini. Think of them as two different cameras that use the same film. Google Flow is like a pro filmmaking tool built around VO3. It's a dedicated interface currently on Google Apps where you can storyboard scenes, manage assets, tweak camera moves, the works. Flow was literally custom designed for VO, lets you do fancy things, upload or generate ingredients like character images via Imogen and reuse them in multiple shots for consistency, control camera angles and motion paths manually, and even use a scene builder to extend the clips seamlessly into the next part of the story. It's basically an AI video studio for filmmakers. Now, Flow isn't open to everyone by default. It's available if you have a Google AI Pro or Ultra subscription in certain regions. Pro subscribers get most Flow features, but only the Ultra tier unlocks VO3 fully. If you are on Pro, you have something called VO3 Fast, speed optimized version with sound, slightly lower quality. I'll talk about that in a sec. All right, this idea cracks me up. A grandma skydiving into the Super Bowl. Talk about a stun granny. Let's make it happen with VO3. I will use Gemini for this one since it's a single crazy clip. First, I lay out the subject and action. An 80 year old grandmother in full skydiving gear is parachuting from a plane. But I won't stop there. I need to set the scene clearly or else who knows where grandma might land. So let's add context. Parachuting from a plane into a packed Super Bowl stadium during a championship game. Now the model knows we've got a huge football stadium filled with people. This context opens up fun audio possibilities too. Crowd noise. Next, motion and framing. I want this to feel epic and a bit absurd. Let's do a wide aerial shot at first to see the whole stadium below with tiny players and a parachute in the sky. Maybe the camera then follows our grandma as she descends. I'll write something like uh, the camera follows her from above as as she skydives in slow motion, the football field rushing up beneath her. Slow motion will emphasize the comedy. Now, style and ambience. Should this look realistic or cartoonish? I think a semi-realistic cinematic style would be hilarious, like it's shot for a blockbuster sports commercial. So I add shot in a cinematic style, bright afternoon sunlight over the stadium, vibrant colors. I'll also tone it as lighthearted and humorous in case the AI tries to make it too intense. Maybe something like the mood is comedic and triumphant. And we must have audio here. What's a Super Bowl without noise? So audio, double colon, the crowd erupts in cheers and laughter when the whooshing by and the grandma yelling woohoo as she comes down. I might even throw in a quick commentator line for fun. The stadium announcer shouts, she's inbound at the 50 yard line, but careful, too much dialogue might clutter an eight second clip. So I'll keep it mainly to crowd noise and grandma's holler. To get the best results from VO3, you need to craft your prompts like a tiny movie scene description. In fact, I use a prompt formula, kind of a checklist to make sure I cover all important aspects of the video. Here are the key elements I always try to include. Subject, who or what is in the scene, 
action, what the subject is doing, context, setting, where and when is this happening, motion, camera and movement, how the scene is shot and moves, style, the visual style or genre, framing, composition, how the shot is framed, and constraints, extras, any additional details or instructions. And don't forget audio, VO3 will generate sound to match your scene, but only if you tell it what you want to hear. So I often append an audio double colon section in the prompt describing sound effects, background noise, or dialogue lines. For example, audio, double colon, crowd cheering, a beat rock music playing faintly. Or character says, hello world. You can specify dialogue explicitly, word for word, or implicitly, like a man introduces himself and let the AI make up the words. If you ask for dialogue, add no subtitles to your prompt, otherwise the model might plaster auto-generated subtitles on the video, which look, well, not great. We'll see that in action soon. A boring prompt like a man answers a phone and might yield a bland clip, but a richly detailed prompt can produce something cinematic. For instance, check this out. Basic prompt. A man answers a rotary phone. Hello? And detailed prompt. A shaky dolly zoom goes from a faraway blur to a close-up cinematic shot of a desperate man in a weathered green trench coat as he picks up a rotary phone mounted on a gritty brick wall. Bathed in the eerie glow of a green neon sign, the zoom reveals the tension on his face as he struggles to speak. Shallow depth of field keeps focus on his furrowed brow and the phone, while the background is a blur of neon colors and shadows, creating a sense of urgency and isolation. Which one would you rather watch? The second prompt, nail subject, action context, motion, the dolly zoom, style, cinematic, neon noir vibes, framing, close-up, ambience, eerie neon glow, all the elements. VO3 will follow the detailed prompt much more faithfully than a vague one, yielding a dramatic video instead of a random guy on a phone. Bottom line, be specific and vivid. Describe what the camera sees and what the mic hears. Now, coming up with such detailed prompt can feel like flexing a new muscle. Here's where I cheat a little. I use ChatGPT to help refine prompts. Sometimes I'll start with a simple idea, say grandma skydiving into stadium, and ask ChatGPT to describe the scene in a funny cinematic way with sights and sounds. The AI will usually output a nicely embellished description that I can copy or tweak for VO. Similarly, I use Midjourney for visual prototyping. I will feed a quick version of my idea to Midjourney to get a still image that helps me visualize the color palette or style I want. Maybe I like how it looks as a 1980s cartoon versus a gritty, realistic photo. And I can then describe that style in my VO prompt. This extra step isn't required, but if you're aiming for a really specific look, it can save trial and error. Let's look at our assembled prompt. A wide shot of a lively American football stadium, Super Bowl final. An elderly grandmother in a skydiver jumpsuit and helmet is parachuting down toward the field, trailing a colorful parachute behind her. The camera follows her descent in slow motion, capturing fans in the stands, jumping to their feet in astonishment. Cinematic, bright daytime look, very realistic but with a fun, absurd tone. Audio, loud crowd cheering, stadium announcer muffled, wind rushing, and the grandma's voice yelling, Yahoo, in excitement, no subtitles. And that covers subject, grandma, action, skydiving, context, Super Bowl stadium, motion, wide, follow shot, slow-mo, style, cinematic, bright, realistic, and audio, crowd, wind, voice, all in one prompt paragraph. It's lengthy, but should guide VO3 perfectly. A moment of truth, let's generate this and see what happens. <laughs> Wow, look at that. She's really skydiving into the stadium. The video shows this tiny parachute coming down over a huge football field, just like we asked. There's a wide shot of the stadium with fans standing up. I can see the crowd detail. And yes, I hear the cheering roar. The grandma is visible hanging from the parachute, maybe not super close on her face because we chose a wide shot, but enough to tell she's an elderly lady in gear. 
VO3 as well as other generators are undoubtedly great, but they all can do one thing, generate complete visual projects. Sure, they can do a few pictures and a few seconds of video, but what about a landing page or portfolio or a login page? If you're doing UX or UI design, you need a way to test your ideas first. I've been playing with magic patterns for a while now, and it's mighty impressive. They are sponsoring this video and think of it as a bottomless whiteboard wired to an AI that already speaks your brand's language. Drop onto the canvas, type something like a login page with a retro theme, and the screen springs up fully clickable, not just a pretty JPEG that begs to be sliced later. Because every element is real code, the prototype behaves the moment it appears, which saves the usual tango of pretend that button works. Speed is only half the charm. There's even a Chrome extension that can steal and lay out with one click and edit straight into your project. The tool blends colors and typography, so the import looks like like it belonged there all along. In the chat window, you can type something like, give me a checkout page that matches this login page. Seconds later, another interactive screen snaps into place, already tuned to the same palette. Then there's an option for real collaboration right on the canvas. One teammate can rewrite a copy, another swap icons, a third poke the form validation, all in the same live link. No files bouncing around. So if the next concept has to move from shower thought to testable product before launch, an infinite canvas backed by code-first AI sounds more helpful than another folder of static mocks. Grab the free account by clicking the link in the description, copy any web page you want, and see how far the idea can stretch. Ever wondered what it would look like if the Minions starred in a Quentin Tarantino film? Neither did I until someone suggested it and I thought, I need to see that. This example will show how style references can completely change the vibe of a video. I'm using Flow this time just to change it up. Flow or Gemini would both work here, but Flow gives me a bit more control if I need to adjust camera angles or a seat for retake. The concept, Minions, Robin a Bank, and Tarantino style. Let's structure this. Now I can guarantee BO3 knows the trademark Minions exactly, but it knows yellow cartoonish creatures, presumably. To be safe, I might describe them without using the brand name. A gang of small yellow cartoon characters with goggles and blue overalls. Yeah, that's obviously Minions, but phrased descriptively. Action. They are robbing a bank, let's add detail, burst into a bank with bags and gadgets, attempting a robbery. I want the scene of a heist in progress. Context, inside a bank, maybe midday, inside a grand bank lobby with marble floors. And to nod to Tarantino, maybe uh, with a slight retro 1970s decor. This will cue some style elements. Framing and motion. Tarantino's style often uses interesting shots, maybe a wide shot of the hall lobby as they come in, so I might write, camera starts with a wide shot as the doors fly open, then cuts to slow motion, low angle shot of the characters striding in, pointing banana shaped guns. Style, Quentin Tarantino's cinematic style, shot in the style of a Tarantino film, dramatic lighting and shadows, a hint of film grain, and an overly cool, confident mood. Also, Tarantino is known for dialogue and violence, but I'll keep it PG-ish for our clip. The contrast of cute minions in a crime thriller style should itself be funny. Audio, double colon, upbeat 70s funk music playing in the background like a high soundtrack, frantic shouting and minion gibberish as they wave their weapons and bank alarms ringing. And of course, no subtitles. Again, because I do not want the AI trying to subtitle minion speak, let's compile that prompt. A band of small yellow cartoonish creatures resembling minions storms into a bank. The bank's interior has marble floors and teller counters with a slight 1970s retro style. Wide shot as the front doors swing open. Then a slow motion, low angle shot of the characters striding in confidently holding makeshift banana guns. The scene feels like a tense stick up from a Quentin Tarantino film. Dramatic shadows, film grain effect, and an intense, cool mood. Audio, a funky 1970s heist soundtrack plays. The creatures yell in excited gibberish. A bank alarm blares in the background. No subtitles. That's a mouthful, but it covers everything from visuals to mood to sound. Time to see what BO3 does with it.
We've got a bank lobby shot. I see the doors flying open and indeed a bunch of little yellow goons run in. They do look minion-like. The style is noticeably different from the grandma clip. Here the colors are a bit more muted and shadowy. You can sense a crime film vibe. This example shows how powerful style cues are. I stayed in Tarantino film style and mentioned specific elements. We guided BO3 to apply an entire genre lens to an otherwise silly cartoon scenario and it handled it well, given us that cinematic tension stylization. Next, I want to push VO3 with something even more outlandish and see where it struggles so we can fix it. We've done two pretty wild examples, but we have time for one more quick one. For this last example, I want to show you that literally any bonkers idea that crosses your mind, you can throw at VO3 and probably get something entertaining out of it. The key is using the prompt formula to give it structure. How about cowboy riding a T-Rex through New York City, shot like a Michael Bay action scene? That's global enough. Who doesn't know cowboys, dinosaurs, and NYC? And absurd enough. Let's speed run this prompt. Subject, cowboy in a big hat and a huge T-Rex dinosaur. Action, cowboy is right in the T-Rex. They are charging through the city streets. Context, New York City, downtown Manhattan, maybe cars screeching. Motion framing, Michael Bay style, so lots of motion, maybe a 360 degree slow-mo shot around them or a low angle hero shot. I'll mention camera circles around them as they charge forward for that Bay flare style. Michael Bay action equals cinematic, high contrast, maybe explosions. I can't resist at an explosion or two, like a car blowing up behind them. Audio, obviously loud. Audio, double column roaring T-Rex, cowboy whooping, car tires screeching, an explosion sound, and dramatic action music. I will format it as one prompt and run it through Gemini. And here it comes. <laughs> We've got a T-Rex barreling down what looks like Times Square, a cowboy on his back waving his hat, and yes, there is an actual explosion behind them. Looks like a car got tossed. The fact that VO3 can merge elements like this from different times and genres and still obey the instructions, like including that explosion because Michael Bay must have explosions, shows how flexible it is. And we did that in one take. If something was off, we know the drill. Tweak the prompt and regenerate, but Honestly, I'm happy with this. If you're loving this intersection of AI and creativity, and maybe you want to go from just dabbling to truly mastering these tools, I invite you to check out the AI Master membership. Shameless plug, well maybe, but I genuinely built it for people like us. As a member, you get in-depth tutorials and prompt engineering, so you can craft prompts like a pro director, early access and tips for the latest AI tools, yes, including things like Flow, Gemini, etc., and some exclusive AI assistants we've created. For example, we have a prompt creator agent that can help you brainstorm and refine prompts interactively. There is also a tool finder agent that keeps you updated on new AI apps and features so you won't miss the next video for or whatever comes and the news agent that filters the AI news down to what actually matters. It's pretty neat. And right now we've got a 63% discount on the annual membership for new folks. So it's a great time to join our community of AI enthusiasts and creators. No pressure, but if you want to accelerate your learning, the options there, link in the description. If you enjoyed this, do hit the like button and consider subscribing to AI Master for more practical and fun AI adventures. Drop a comment on what insane video prompt you plan to try, stay creative and keep experimenting. Who knows, your idea plus AI might just be the next viral hit on the internet. Happy prompting and see you soon. Hey guys, I need a photo of AI Master. TSS, this is me, Arthur. See ya! <laughs>